Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at Return to Sender, one of the more interesting overclocks for the Breach Cutter. So Return to Sender is a balanced overclock that makes it so once you release the fire button, your projectile will reverse its movement. So it'll go so far and then once you release it, it will start coming back. This is all set on the same timer, so you can have this go pretty far and just have it uh, linger a little bit at the end of this. Or you can potentially shoot it and make it go back and even go behind you which is rather interesting. Downside to this is that we get less ammo overall. Now our ammo does get cut in half, but we can now potentially get twice the amount of DPS back from that. Maybe. It's eh, not always that way. Most of the time it's not that way. Uh, so we are still losing out on ammo, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're losing out on damage or even if we are losing out on damage, it may not be always practical damage, if that kind of makes sense. I'll kind of explain this once we go into the actual gameplay section of this. So the way I have it built is like this. In tier 1 I'm running with a larger mag size, but you could also go with duration. Duration helps this one quite a lot too. I just like having the 6 rounds in the gun and having more ammo overall. Tier 2 I'm definitely taking ammo because we need some more ammo for this one. You can go damage if you only want to use this for big things. That's an okay option too. Um, the wider width isn't necessarily a bad option, but it's not always needed because most of the time just one round going through a crowd will kill basically everything with the breach cutter. In tier 3, I'm going with the faster startup. This just makes it so our breach cutter goes out immediately. You don't necessarily need this one with this overclock. You could go with the faster reload. I run born ready on my engineer, so I don't really go with the faster reload, and I usually try not to reload my breach cutter. I just let born ready take care of that for me. In tier 4 I'm going with the stun, but armor breaking is really good too. You do either one of those, take whichever one you'd like. And then in tier 5 I'm going with the plasma trail, which makes it so that we do a little bit more damage over time because this lingers with plasma, similar to how persistent plasma works on the EPC. You could go with the explosive goodbye, that one is usable but kind of difficult to use with this particular overclock or you could go with the triple line split again like always triple line split does not give you triple damage i get this question a lot but it just makes it so your hitbox is much bigger and far more forgiving that one's also a really good option especially if you're just getting used to the breach cutter this pairs fairly well with whatever kind of primary you would like uh, i'm going to be pairing it with explosive chemical rounds on the loki which is a really strong loadout in general lets you have really good burst damage really good range and uh, even lets us have some level of crowd control as well as high single target damage. This one kind of does everything. I don't know if it's a good idea to be using this as a shield, but looks like it'll work for the time being. Uh, Bosco, you want to get that? I think I need a resupply at some point because I'm going to run out of bullets eventually. I've got two dreadnoughts to kill and I've already died once from just breaking my feet. Okay, let's begin this. See which dread we get. Regular dread, heck yeah. This overclock is actually really strong against him in particular. So the way you can use this, it, it does take time to get used to, because it took me forever to get used to this one, is fire it, hold down the trigger, and then release it so that it comes back to you. If you have explosive goodbye, you have to push it again while the uh, breach cutter is still flying around. Or I guess where the breach shot is still flying around, I should say. So that takes even more getting used to. <laughs> And it has always felt like a very weird option for me. Now I'm going to just let uh, Born Ready trigger a reload. Steve's going to get us some value there. And I'm going to try not to get uh, destroyed. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty solid plane to me. Yeah, it's going to get them my Shredder drones. I've also stripped Steve naked, which is not really great. He still seems okay on health. Yeah, he's actually doing pretty good on health. All right, <laughs> and the last little bit. All right, and he's dead. Breach cutter hits like an absolute truck. This overclock can make it so you can get higher DPS in the short run. And I talked about having potentially higher damage or higher burst damage earlier. Um, and whether or not that may or may not matter. In cases against hitting big things like the Dreadnoughts, it probably doesn't really matter, because you're just going to get more damage if you use the Overclock. But in crowds, it may matter, because you might just kill all of them with the first beam that goes through, and you may not even need the second beam. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. See what I mean? Like, all those grunts died just from the first beam. It coming back didn't really get me any value, because there wasn't more that just kind of flooded into the area.
Oh, one thing that I should mention is that the uh, plasma coming back to you, similar to spinning death, can't actually hurt you. It can hurt teammates, but you really shouldn't worry about that too much, unless they're at critical health, and I'm completely lost in this game. So if you are just standing in front of like an oppressor like I was, you can just fire the beam back and forth through them. And so long as you don't have a teammate standing on either side of it, where you're firing, uh, you shouldn't be doing any friendly fire damage. And of course you can melt things like that really fast with the breach cutter. Breach cutter kind of melts everything really fast though. Oh, okay. Dread is right over here then. <laughs> yeah, of course. I walked all the way around the cave system just to end up back to the start again. <laughs> Alright, Hive Guard. Bridge Cutter should be pretty strong against him too, because in the last stage we can fight him just how we fought the regular Dread. And uh, even in stage 2 we should be able to get decent value from the, uh, the Return to Sender. Oh well, now we got the now we got the dirt in my face. Try to get some value here. Yeah, kind of. Didn't really shoot it that well from that one side. Luckily, we have explosive chemical rounds though, so we don't have to be all that accurate. Oh. <laughs> okay. Go get him, breach cutter. Go get him again. Did I actually get hit by one of the pine cones then? Or not? That seemed kind of weird. Alright, get them, Swarmer Drones. Take them out, kill them fast. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get hit directly by one of the pine cones? That might have been what happened. The Reds and Loki is so nice just for stuff like this. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's right, that is my last. Hmm. Get him, drones, get him! Oh, I got blown up. <laughs> I think I stepped back into one. We should be fine now. I still got one more down and I got my resupply right there. And I got a resupplier, so. We are all good. Oh, and I have breathing room too, so. <laughs> if you have all that in combination, it's pretty easy to grab a resupply, assuming there's one nearby. Oh, whoop. Sorry, Bosco. I need to shoot him in the fleshy bits, or just honestly anywhere near him, because explosives. Okay. I think this should be his last stage. Yeah, it definitely looks like it. Alright. I think you return to Zender. Guess I'll call down another one of these and we can be on our way. I actually didn't even need to call down another one of those. I could have just grabbed this one. Oh well. We can try going for our other three evil nuts. I don't think I looked down here at all, so just need to find. Oh, never mind. Found two more. All right. Now we can be. All right. I just. This looks familiar, doesn't it? Will I learn from my past mistakes, or will I make new ones? Just so long as something happens, it's not so bad, right? <laughs> there we go. Broke my feet at the bottom, but that's okay. My legs are still mostly intact. They can be glued back together once we get back to the back to the space rig. Let's see. Only 91 kills. We didn't even have triple digits. That's kind of surprising for a 20 minute mission because I ran around the map for like a good 10 minutes just being lost. <laughs> 